We're going to look today at some specific do's and don'ts for salespeople and sales leaders. And the reason for this is that we've been doing some research in that area and there's some very specific things that have come out of it. Now, to help look at this issue is Professor Lynette Riles. Now, Lynette's been do doing some research and it was published in the Harvard Business Review. Now, Lynette, sales success, what does it look like in practice? I think this is a, a key message for sales leaders that when we're looking at complex business to business selling that it's important that we measure sales success not just in terms of walking away with the deal but in terms of moving the sale forward. Now the reason for that is that these sales processes are normally 18 months, 24 months, they're long sales processes. If sales leaders and sales managers focus too much on the actual getting the deal, what might happen is that they're encouraging salespeople always to go for the easy wins. And those easy wins are likely to be the less valuable deals that they could be working on. So we need, we need to think differently about that measure of sales success. Now, are there any other areas that we need to think and do differently, if you like, the don'ts? Mm. This, is, this is a great question. And something that came very strongly out of the Harvard Business Review article was that very aggressive selling techniques are actually negatively associated with sales success. So... I feel that there's something about unlearning some previous bad behaviours, that this, this kind of hard selling is not appropriate in these longer term major business to business relationships. So you mean things like closing techniques for instance? Absolutely, yes. And, and that, that very aggressive kind of, of closing and closing too early um, during the process, bearing in mind as I've been saying that these are typically much longer sales processes. Now let's look at the more positive angle because some things came out of your research about if you're doing some of those things you're more likely to be successful. What are they? Well that's absolutely right and in fact the, there were some very strong indicators around things like what we call adaptive selling. So more flexibility, uh, more thinking about the solution for the, for the client, the benefit for, the, for your customer and also um, actually selling the value, the value proposition rather than just as it were selling the, the, the product that the firm makes, what's the solution, what's the value to the customer and it's around that kind of area, about that flexibility and adaptiveness. Also there's something around dealing with customer objections and, and, and as it were negotiating and managing all the way through the, through the deal. So these are important and different behaviours that we need to encourage. Yes, because they're not terribly common are they from, from what your research suggested? Well, that's right. And in fact, the Harvard Business Review article was indicating that perhaps only just over a third of salespeople are, are typically demonstrating these behaviours. Uh, and I, I think that's maybe something that we should talk about a little bit more when we think about the implications for sales directors. So, I mean, if we pick up these implications, I mean, there's clearly an area here for for training and development. I mean, can you say more specifically what you'd like to see? Mm, absolutely. I think we need to say to sales directors, our research shows be very careful how you train your salespeople. I suspect that there's still a lot of training that's going on in the area of presentation skills. Um, and actually, we've seen that that has no relationship to sales success. In fact, in some ways it may be detrimental because it may focus salespeople perhaps on delivering their presentation no matter what. Whereas actually what's needed is something that's more adaptive and more flexible, more about listening to the customer and less about just delivering the, the sales pitch. So careful listening, carefully responding to any objections, talking about value, those are the sort of things you're talking about. That's absolutely right, yes. So key message then, mm. what would it be? The, the key message is a rather shocking one for sales directors, which is that we couldn't find any relationship between effective sales behaviours and the degree to which they're used by salespeople. In other words, there is no tendency for salespeople to use more effective sales behaviours. So the key message there is make sure your salespeople understand the value of these, these more adaptive, more flexible types of sales behaviours, that they understand what kinds of behaviours are effective, the kinds of things we've been talking about. They need also to understand the kinds of behaviours that are ineffective, that are positively damaging to their chances of, of sales success. And I would say the takeaway for sales directors in a nutshell is you can change your salespeople's behaviors. 
you'll need some combination of, of training for sure, but also I think coaching and mentoring. And I would certainly say observe your salespeople in the sales situation. What kinds of behaviours are they using? And then look at whether those behaviours are effective or not. Lynette, some very valuable messages there. Thank you.